You ask questions, and I answer them. Nuts? What am I talking about? It's super cool because of the deck design. Boom, watch fam. What is up, watch fam? Welcome to episode 54 of Ask TNH. Like, I'm watching Phillips Auction right now, which we did an episode of Ask TNH on, on Tuesday. Check it out if you haven't already seen it. For current events, I say this all the time, but follow us on Snapchat. I can't say it enough. It's what's happening every day. You know, there's, there's, you, there's no more uh, quick and ready and relevant uh, form of media. That's it. So follow us on Snapchat for that. But uh, let's get into the question. I don't hate Bamford as much as everyone else does. Um, I think that there are some, I think not just there are some, they're not outliers. I think that a lot of their watches are fucking ugly as shit, you know, but, okay. My first introduction to Bamford was an interview, I think it was on GQ, right? And the essence of the interview, or at least the beginning, was the founder, I don't remember his name, basically said that five guys went out one night and unplanned, they weren't trying to match, and they all showed up in still Daytonas. Right, and they all, uh, I'm, wearing, I'm wearing a JLC today, by the way, uh, but they, they all showed up in steel Daytonas. And it was cliche, right? And it was boring, and it was unoriginal because it was the same, different five guys from different parts of the world, et cetera, et cetera, but they were wearing the same, you know, watch. It's in a boring watch, but when there are five on people's wrists, it shows a blatant, you know, lack of individuality, machined. Everyone's another spoke in the Rolex wheel, and nothing's different, everything's the same, et cetera, et cetera. So I understand, I actually respect that a ton, because I think that Rolex is too generic. I think that Rolex is too machined, right? So I think that Bamford does offer a great solution to that. You know, customizing. I'm I'm disgustingly big on customizing. I think that the Hublot Unico, the one they released with Lapo Elcan at the Italian Independent, I think it was an ugly fucking watch. But I think it was awesome that they customized the watch so specifically. It was ugly as shit. But what it stands for, I think, is a level of customization, a level of luxury that we're not really seeing elsewhere. So it's no surprise that I really do appreciate companies like Bamford customizing things uh, on order, on demand, um, et cetera, you know, just different things, right? They're very unique. But a lot of it does fall on your taste, right? And, and in the person that's wearing it, right? So I, when I see Bamford, I see a, a huge dilemma. You're wearing a Bamford watch, but let's say you have really bad taste and the Bamford watch that you wanted made is ugly. And that's obviously a Bamford watch. It says Bamford on it. I personally, as Bamford, I would look more at the long-term dollar and say, I, I, I'll make my own unique watches. I'll take the Daytona and make 30 different iterations of it that I think are tasteful. But they don't do that, at least as I've seen. You know, they might, but at least as I've seen, there are some pretty ugly Bamford watches out there. So to me, that presents a dilemma for the company. What Bamford watches that I do like? Um, I like the uh, Snoopy and the Popeye. I think they're kind of funny. You know, they, they really take the whole thing very lightly. Uh, it almost becomes a, a joke, you know, which is fine. I mean, it's, you know, it's an it's a uber luxury item. And I think it's, it's funny to make them a joke sometimes. There's nothing really intrinsically intriguing about the hands of a, a Rolex Gold Yacht Master. But adding the Popeye thing, although totally ridiculous, is actually kind of funny. You know, so overall, I mean, you know, I'm not going to give my one-time review on a Bamford watch because there's nothing to talk about. It's a Rolex. It's, it's just a Rolex that we've talked about a hundred times and every blog talks about done differently. And I think that the fact that they do it differently is awesome. I do. But I think that there should be a, a much more restrained design process because I think it gets too... Not, just, not even outlandish, but just ugly. I think that a really good example of an ugly Bamford watch is their GMT BLNR, the, um, the, the Batman, in all black. I think that the blue standing out is just is hideous, whereas the blue on the regular version, the regular Rolex, is gorgeous. I think that the, the complements, the steel and the blue, and the, everything complements each other, but when you black it out, I think it's hideous. So I, I wouldn't allow that. I, mean, I, wouldn't, uh, I just wouldn't approve that. But that's just kind of my, I guess that's my kind of taste. But that's, those are my thoughts, really. Thank you guys for watching episode 54 of Ask T&H. Uh, if you haven't already, go check out uh, last the episode from Tuesday uh, because it's a total polar opposite, you know, um, a topic. This was customization and then kind of, you know, modern take on design, whereas on, on Tuesday we talked about the Phillips auction and um, it, just couldn't, it just couldn't be more the opposite. It's, it's holistically based on uh, purity and history. So I think it was kind of a cool juxtaposition. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys soon.